Okay, I told you this morning that we were going to be preparing firewood, and here we are. We've got a pile of firewood that was left by the deer hunters back in the late fall. Um, we're very thankful for them. May God bless those people that left this wood. Anyways, we've got some hardwood here. We're going to be splitting it up into smaller pieces because my little cooking stove won't fit real long pieces of wood. It only fits little short pieces of wood. So we're going to be cutting a lot of this into half and then we're going to be splitting it so that it will burn easier and fit into my little stove. First, a bow saw. So I carry a big bow saw like this. This is like a 29 or 30 inch bow saw. I carry it in my toolbox along with a lot of other gear that I need, come alongs, pry bars, jacks, all kinds of stuff that I keep in my toolbox. A good cross cut blade. Um, this one is made by Baco. I think I got it at like Tractor Supply or Lowe's or somewhere like that. But I have used it and used it and used it and it has been a really good saw for me. I've actually never changed this blade and it's getting to the point I just bought a new blade the other day and we may have to change that here pretty quick. This is about a 29 or 30 inch bow saw um, and it works really good for being able to get long strokes. If you've got a short stroke your wood you're going to be there all day but good long strokes gets a lot of cut through that wood. So the longer your bow saw, the more efficient it's going to be. So another tool that I use a lot when I'm going out gathering wood, and sometimes you've got to cut trails to get there to find, find wood that's already laid down in the forest, is a machete. This is a condor made in El Salvador. Um, very good steel. I've had this for maybe eight or ten years. I've used it a lot. It's got one little nick out of it right there, but it hasn't slowed it down. I keep it nice and sharp all the way around, uh, and it has done a really good job. It's got a nice handle where uh, your hand won't slip off of it as you're swinging it through uh, the, the woods. It's a plastic handle, and I'm not sure uh, if this is a rivet that goes through the spine or not. But it's about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick, good and sturdy, heavier at the end, uh, good cutting power. For splitting wood, I've got a Gransfors Bruck, what they call a small forest axe. And uh, these are hand forged axes with hickory handles, made in Sweden. Um, they come nice and sharp and I keep it that way. Um, you can buy the uh, file and a sharpening stone and a honing stone uh, from the same place and I strongly recommend that you get one of those. I've used this hatchet extensively. I've always taken good care of it and it has lasted. Just the shape of the blade is really good for splitting wood. <clears throat> Nevertheless, with all these tools, take discretion, use safety at all costs, and always cut away from you when you can. And when you can't, rearrange things where you can cut away from you. So you've got coniferous softwoods and deciduous hardwoods. The way you can tell the difference is your coniferous hardwood or softwoods are like pine, cedar, fir, those are the ones that stay green year round and have little nettles instead of big fat leaves. Your deciduous hardwoods are the ones that have the big fat leaves and they, they lose their leaves in the fall and regain them again in the spring. And the reason why you want those hardwoods is they'll burn hotter and last longer in your fire unless of course you've got a pine knot which burns really really hot because of all the sap that's in it. Where you get your fat wood from is usually pine. Uh, any areas of the pine tree where the sap has condensed in a certain area, uh, you get some good fat wood, good dry fat wood with lots of sap in it. Lights up easy and burns really hot, 
be careful burning very much fat wood in a stove. You'll melt your stove down. Okay? So those are the three tools that we're going to be using for cutting wood. And let's get after it. I talked to you about the importance of having a good long bow uh, saw for efficiency. Let me demonstrate that. If you've got a little bitty short bow saw and you're having to short stroke it like that, it is going to take you forever to get through this big old chunk of wood. But with a longer bow saw, you can get a long reach in it and you can see all the wood that it's cutting out. Now what's really important with a bow saw is to keep the top of your saw perpendicular or straight up and down with your blade. So don't don't let your saw get tilted off one way or another. Try and keep it straight up and down as you go back and forth through the wood. Okay, I wanted to show you guys the view that I have while I'm cutting wood, okay? That creek right there. I wanted to make a point that it's really handy to have a uh, set of saw horses or some type of device to hold your wood still while you're cutting it, especially when it gets to these little short pieces. But if you just hold on to it with one hand and go back and forth with your saw without putting a lot of pressure. The saw, just the weight of the bow saw itself will start cutting through the wood. And as long as you're going back and forth perfectly straight and up and down, there's not that much pressure on the piece of wood. Okay? As soon as you get off kilter a little bit, it's going to snag and twist the wood in your hand. So try and stay perfectly up and straight up and down and straight with your cut. And you don't have to have that much downward force. cut pieces of wood next okay time to start cutting it into small pieces so we've we've cut it up into the right lengths now we're cutting it up into the right widths We'll start with these small pieces. If they've already got a crack in them, go ahead and use that. Keep your hand out of the way when you're chopping down through it. Just get it started with a few light taps and go on down through it. What I'm doing is cutting these pieces into thirds. It all depends on how big your piece of wood is. Another uh, good tip is instead of trying to start your axe perfectly square with the piece of wood, it doesn't want to start very well. So start it off on the edge of the piece of wood with your axe tilted. It gets right in there and then you can really start hammering on it. These pieces are a little smaller, so I'm just cutting them in half.
that was a good example of why you don't want your fingers down in the way when you're really chopping through it uh, because it can get through it quick quicker than you can get your hand out of the way so just keep it out of the way Let me get through these smaller pieces. When I get to the bigger pieces, I'm sure there's going to be a little different technique to do. So I'll get back at you as soon as I finish up all this little stuff. So when you're getting into these bigger pieces of wood, and these are about the, as big a pieces of wood as you're going to split with a little hatchet like this or a small, small axe. You want to make sure when you get a good swing on it, that you are swinging straight down to where if you go through that piece of wood your axe is going to hit this piece of wood so you're swinging straight down through there okay not where you're just gonna barely catch it and it ricochet down into your leg and not where you're gonna miss it up here and it hit your handle and break your axe you want to make sure you're hitting right in the center of this piece of wood and driving down into your chopping block okay so give yourself plenty of room and when you hit it you hit it with meaning you mean to make the head of this the, the blade end of this axe go through this wood and into your chopping block now some of this wood is pretty hard and it takes a good hard whack at it but a controlled safe whack at it okay let me show you what i mean you see when i came through it it hit straight down into my chopping block that's what you want. Do not pull your axe towards you. Do not push the axe away from you, but drive it straight down through into your chopping block. Okay, another helpful hint. Safety always. Make sure you've got a good stable <coughs> platform to split your wood against. And wood, don't split against rocks. Your hatchet or axe will go right through the wood and into the rock and dull your axe or hatchet. We've got quite a bit of work in front of us. We're going to get after it and then stack this wood up underneath the rain fly of the tent in case it rains, dews, whatever. It will help keep our wood dry. Okay? Thanks for staying with me. Um, we went through cutting it up into lengths and now we're splitting it into burnable size pieces. It's a pretty good little process. It's taken about uh, two and a half hours so far this morning. And this is the wood we've got. It'll probably take another hour to two hours to split all of this. So it's plan on wood procurement being a pretty good um, chore for a day. And uh, don't count it out. All right, thanks for staying with me. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be back with another episode on something else. Thanks.